Hey guys, so this is my last part of my huge um, book haul. Um, yeah, definitely have a book buying problem, but the thing is they constantly publish beautiful books like this one, for example. So this is Valhalla, a novel by Nikki May, and um, this has gotten so much praise on Bookstagram and Booktube. Right now it sounds really amazing and I instantly had to buy it. I'm currently reading it and so you will see this in my February wrap up. Um, so this is about three friends um, who have known each other for ages. One is called Ronka, she's heavily, um, she wants uh, two kids and um, she's currently having, a, she currently has a boyfriend who she thinks is the one, but her uh, her friends definitely don't like him. There's Boo, who has everything that Ronka wants. She has a kid, she has a husband, but she's really frustrated, unfulfilled, and um, definitely not happy about her present uh, situation. And then there's Simi, um, who's the golden one with the perfect lifestyle. She, um, she, she just has it all. And then comes Isabel. I think Simi brings her into the mix and um, this fourth uh, friend derails the uh, balance of, of these friend of this friendship group and um, yeah sounds amazing looks amazing currently is a lot of fun to read um, so I'm expecting a lot from this um, the next book I bought uh, quite recently because it uh, came out in this beautiful new edition uh, it's called the Bastard of Istanbul by Liv Shafak. Um, so this is about um, a family who's cursed apparently because every single man in the family dies before he's reached the age of uh, 40. And so this is a very matriarchal uh, family because a lot of the women survive. And um, yeah, it's about that group of women and um, the secret in their past and a cousin who visits from America and brings these um, um, yeah, secrets to light. Alif Shafak is an amazing writer. You can read any single book by her, I think, and not be disappointed. So definitely going to be a treat. The next one is a bit of a thriller, I think. Uh, it's called Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. Um, so I got this on a charity sale and it sounded really intriguing. So this is about Francis who um, is in an old, I think, vacation home where she has to write a report that she's a bit stuck in. And um, she's constantly uh, drawn um, to this couple who lives downstairs. They're really glamorous. They constantly have like this luscious feast for dinner, and she becomes increasingly entangled with this couple. And then something happens, a sort of crime, that uh, yeah, destroys their lives. I don't know. Sounds intriguing. Next one is a book that has gotten so many amazing reviews. It's the Costa Book of the Year of 2020. It's called The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Raffae. So this tells the tale of a um, uh, young fisherman called David, who is, uh, while he's singing, um, attracts the attention of a mermaid called Akaya. Akaya? I have no idea how to pronounce the name. Uh, she is was an innocent young woman who was cursed um, because of the jealousy of the young wives um, who thought that she was attracting too much attention of their husbands. And um, she really suffered because of that curse. I think she, uh, American tourists uh, capture her and I think they, I don't know if they torture her or try to sell her, but they rescues her, her and under his care and really loving um, way of being with, with her and uh, she s slowly starts back to like slowly comes back to being um, a human woman and um, eventually it occurs still um, I think um, like they can't really escape the curse uh, that she's been put under sounds amazing it's supposed to be really good. The next one is uh, definitely a lighter read, and that's called Reputation by Lex Croucher. So this is basically Bridgerton in book form. It's described as as if Bridgerton and Fleabag had a book baby. So this is really high praise because 
Fleabag, I think, is one of the best TV shows that has ever been made. It's so funny, and Bridgerton is pretty sexy, not gonna lie. And um, so this is really high praise for a book. It uh, follows the young um, middle-class Georgina, Georgiana Ellers, um, who has moved to a new town and she meets a group of friends and she moves in this really exciting circle of young people. And that's all I know about it. I think this is gonna be a light read and a treat. Next one is a beloved book on Bookstagram and it's called Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikatsu Kabuguchi. Um, this is um, a bit of a fantastical book that plays in a coffee store where you can uh, travel to some point in your past for the duration that it takes a coffee to get cold. So you have to finish the coffee before it gets cold, um, but you can travel back in the past and fix something, have a last conversation with someone, um, but you only have the time it takes the coffee to get cold. It's supposed to be really amazing. Um, there's even a second book um, that came out um, in this storyline and yeah, probably it's gonna be a good one. Um, then this immediately drew my eye. I love um, books that have like a sort of sunset feel and this is called This One Sky Day by Leon Ross. Um, this takes place in Bobisho um, where everyone has a sort of magical power, a really specific cover, uh, um, sorry, a really specific talent um, or power. Um, like one, for example, can make the perfect dish for uh, a person at the perfect time. I don't know. And um, it's about the powers of the different people and two people who have to try to find a way to each other in duration of one day, I think. Don't really know much about this one, but I've heard really good reviews. Uh, the next one is a gorgeous, gorgeous new edition of a classic. So this is um, was originally published as Lilith's Brood um, by Oct Octavia E. Pat Butler, and this is now um, a three-part uh, edition with these beautiful covers. So this is Dawn. This is the uh, first novel in, in the series and um, it tells the beginning of the story which is about Lilith um, who wakes up in this really sterile white walled room and she uh, wakes up to um, finding herself living among the Oankali, a strange race who intervened in the lives of humans. They saved a couple of people when they um, realized that uh, they were destroying their own planet, Earth, and uh, are now uh, have spent decades and millennia um, studying uh, human history to find out what went wrong. And now they want Lilith and the others to repopulate the world and um, make a new and better life on Earth. And uh, sounds really interesting. I also or the second part of this, Adulthood Rights, because it's been on sale at my local bookstore and I've ordered it, so looks amazing, sounds amazing. Hopefully it's gonna be a treat. Next one is also a classic and that's The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich. Erdrich? Erdrich? Um, so this is a beloved classic and it sounds so interesting. So this takes place in 1953 and the main protagonist is Thomas Vashuk. He's a night watchman at the first factory to open near the Turtle Mountain Reservation. He's also a council member of the Gbiver Council and he is really troubled by the uh, proposed Emancipation Act which he correctly sees as an infringement on the rights of Native Americans. And it's also about Pixie. He, she is a factory worker and um, who is really suffering because her father is an alcoholic who sometimes steals from her, I think, or begs um, money of her, but she needs every cent to look for her sister Vera, who's vanished years before. That's all I know about it. It's a beloved classic. The cover is gorgeous, so I bought it. Uh, the next one, another classic by now, and it's The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Um, this is um, a collection of Fairy tale retellings of Angela Card that's supposed to be really dark and that's all I need to know about this. The next one is a pretty new book called Rizio by Denise Mina. 
Um, so this takes place in 1566. Um, there is a huge feast that Mary, uh, Queen of Scots, is having. And what she doesn't know is that the castle is surrounded by enemies who have come um, to m murder um, David Rizzio, her friend and secretary, and a handsome Italian man. And um, this uh, complot to kill him has been um, done by her husband, who wants um, Rizzio to be killed in front of her because he wants to her to see his murder. Sounds intense, it's a really thin book, um, but I don't know, something drew me to it. The next one is a really new book that has just come out and it sounds amazing. And that's Out of the Sun by Essie Edugian. Um, essays at the Crossroads of Race. So this, um, are, this is an essay collection with five essays. Uh, she's an amazing writer and she writes about Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, but also about her own life, what it's like to grow up as the daughter of Ghanaian immigrants, I think. Yes, Ghanaian immigrants. Um, but she also looks at um, how, um, what it does to society if the stories of minorities are never told. And um, she tries to bring these stories to the forefront of her books and her, in this essay collection. The cover itself, I mean, is amazing. This is awesome. And um, I think this is gonna be a five-star read. And last but not least of my huge book haul <laughs> is Capote's Women, another nonfiction read, this time by Lawrence Lemer. So this is um, the story of the swans that um, Capote, Truman Capote wrote about. So this was um, a group of really rich women who married rich, not all of them were born rich, um, and uh, Capote befriended them and decided to write his big opus about them. A couple of uh, chapters of this big opus before he died were already published in the Esquire and it was only a really thinly real description of his friends' lives and they immediately iced him out of their society and it's about their lives. So yeah, that was it. <laughs> this is my gigantic book haul. Um, let me know if you are interested in reading any of them. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you soon. Bye!